All right. Hello. Is it is it on? Can you hear me? Okay. Uh, hi everyone. I am Namrata Roy. I am a grad student here in UC UC Santa Cruz, working with Kevin Bundy, and I am going to talk about this new class of quasars and galaxies discovered by the Manga team, called the Red Geysers. And uh, Kevin already gave a very nice introduction about the geysers the other day in his talk. So this would kind of be like a continuation of that. All right, so this is like a normal quasar galaxy, right? So if you just look at this galaxy, uh, the image of this galaxy, you wouldn't expect anything exotic happening in, in here, right? But now, with the advent of resolved IFU surveys like Manga, we get uh, resolved information from different parts of this galaxy. So now you can look at things like this, and this is exciting. So you are looking at the H alpha ionized gas equivalent width map, uh, and spatially resolved. And you see this bisymmetric emission feature kind of extending throughout the entire spatial scale of the galaxy. I should mention that this emission feature is not very strong, it's kind of on the weaker side, but the, uh, the feature is very distinct. So the objective of this work is, uh, uh, what's the main objective of this work? So this red geyser galaxies show interesting emission features, as I showed. Uh, there are kinematic features that I'll be showing in a second. Uh, that, and we looked at this data, and we thought that this galaxies might be showing AGN-driven winds as some sort of feedback mechanism happening in here. So, uh, but before going that far or making that strong an argument, we wanted to take a step back and ask a more basic question that do these galaxies have an active AGN in the center that is capable of driving winds and that can suppress star formation? So that's why we decided to look for, so this is not the question we are asking right now, so we are asking whether these galaxies have any radio AGN in the center. So we were looking at the radio data, uh, and we are searching for the radio mode AGNs in the center. All right, so about the kinematic features of the same galaxy that uh, I was showing you. Uh, so this is the bisymmetric pattern in the H alpha equivalent width I was talking about. And here you are looking at the stellar velocity map, spatially resolved, and the gas velocity maps. And this column, this panel, is the dispersion maps. So the first thing you notice is that the equivalent feature kind of lines up with the major axis of the gas velocity. But it shows a misalignment with the stellar velocity axis. So it's kind of hard to see, but because of the color. So you see like the, the major axis of the stars is kind of along this. And this is along this. So there is a slight misalignment. Now, if you look at the color bar, like the values of the velocity, the color bars, the lighter color means higher velocity. So here, you, look, you can see that the gas velocity values are very high. That goes up to plus minus 300 kilometer per second. Compared to the stellar velocity, it's very low. It's about 50 or 60 kilometer per second. So it's hard to explain. So the gas velocity values are hard to explain if you only consider gravity. So if you just think about the rotational velocity due to the gravitational field of the stars, you cannot explain the high gas velocity that you are seeing here. Also, some parts of this galaxy show very high gas velocity dispersion. So this was the import, these were the important features that were seen in the prototype geyser. Surprisingly, this type of galaxies are very common. It was, it was seen that about 5 to 10 percent of the local quiescent population make up the red geysers. So that made us, so we actually went back to the manga data and looked at, visually inspected all the red manga galaxies and actively searched for the signatures. Um, uh, and we found about 80 red geysers in our sample of about 1,000 red manga galaxies. So that's quite a lot. 
Uh, we classify them as type A and type B depending on how promising they are as a Geiger candidate. So type A Geiger's are most, uh, shows the most prominent signatures. Type B are slightly less prominent. So in order to show you some examples, so this is an example of a type A Geiger that we call the prominent Geiger. Uh, and you can clearly see the bisymmetric feature. You can see the high gas velocity values, the misalignment angle, high gas velocity dispersion. The type B geysers are slightly less prominent in the sense that they kind of, this, this kind of show like a one-sided thing here, but they do, so, uh, they do show a high gas velocity value and the misalignment angle, also the high gas velocity dispersion. Uh, all right, so now coming back to the radio observation, we le looked at the VLA first survey. Uh, in order to compare the radioactivity of the geysers with something, uh, we constructed a control sample. And uh, this control sample was chosen to have similar global integrated galaxy properties. So they were matched with the geysers in stellar mass, redshift, axis ratio, color, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And we went back and searched for radio detection in the first catalog for these galaxies. So we found that there was a 14% detection rate in the red geysers, as opposed to 5% in the control galaxies. And we made sure that we uh, chose like different subsets of the control galaxies and so that uh, we are not making a specific uh, choice. So uh, we made sure that this number stays the same in whatever way we pick the control sample. Uh, so this is, a, this, is, this is a good result, right? So we are sh seeing a high detection rate. But the problem with the first survey is that it has a very shallow detection threshold. It doesn't go very deep. So the, it goes un up to like one millijansky. So this is obviously missing out some of the faint signatures. So the only way to get around it was to stack the sample, and that's what we did. So this is the key plot. So uh, you are looking at the stacked radio flux from the Geiger sample and the control sample. So the red point up here is the stacks, radio stack from the red Geiger's, and the blue is from the control. And the yellow point is a subset of the control sample where we additionally controlled from the ionized gas content. So we uh, made a cut on the H alpha equivalent width value and so that we are comparing similar stuff. So the red point is much higher than the blue point. That means we are seeing an enhanced radio flux in the geysers. But then we asked ourselves, well, if what happens if there are like a few radio bright source in our sample that is biasing our result? Because that might change this uh, significance level, right? So in the next step, what we did is we removed all the radio bright uh, you know, sources we have in each of the red geysers and control sample and reperformed the stacking. And that is what we got. We, we, we can still see that the, the stacked radio flux from the geysers is much higher than the control sample. So now someone might ask, well, what about star formation? Because we know star formation also uh, have contribution in the radio data, right? So we looked at the wise near infrared data. And uh, we, uh, from the Chang et al. catalog, we have star formation rate value from Full opt, uh, optic, uh, from the full SED fitting or using optical and near-infrared data. So as you can see, in the star formation red versus stellar mass diagram, most of our galaxies have a very low value of star formation rate. But there are a very few which, lie, which have a slightly higher value. So in this step, we removed all these galaxies that lie above the black dashed line. And we have reformed the stacking. And this is the result that we got. So this panel you should be looking at right now. Uh, so after removing all the star formation, star forming galaxies, uh, we still see that our result holds. So we are still getting an enhanced flux, radio flux from the geysers. Uh, oh, we should, uh, I should mention that we had JVLA data for like 10 of our red geysers. So nine of them showed radio detection. And they were, since they had like a high spatial resolution and also greater uh, detection, uh, uh, nine, out, nine out of ten of them were radio detected, and they were consistent with nuclear radio, uh, radio source coming from the nuclear region. So this, uh, so there is no star formation. We think these are coming from the AGN at the center. So we think these are detections of radio mode AGN that we were looking for. So while we were looking for these red Geyser galaxies, 
And there is this other type of galaxies that we actually found while we were looking at the manga data. So we call it H alpha disturbed. So these galaxies do not quite show the bisymmetric feature in the H alpha equivalent width map, but they show like H alpha enhancement blobs all over the galaxy. And they also have gas velocity values to be quite high. Some of them even show the misalignment angle. So we were curious what these galaxies are. Uh, so what we did was we just took them out and we performed radio stacking as before. We have about 60 of them in our sample right now. And this is what we got. So this peak point is what is the radio stack from this H alpha disturbed galaxies. And they show comparable radio flux. And actually, it's slightly higher than the red geyser stack. Uh, so this might be uh, this might be an intermediate class between the normal quiescent galaxies and the red geysers. This might be a post geyser phase where they can form out of the, you know, the wind material of the geysers. They might be due to mergers, tidal interaction. We don't really know. But what we do know is that they, they do have, uh, they, they also have a radio, uh, low luminosity radio source in the centers. Uh, so, how much time do I have? Two minutes. So uh, yeah, I, I don't think I have time to talk about this plot in detail, but what we, what we did is we just plotted the radio luminosity versus stellar mass uh, of all the radio detected, first radio detected galaxies in Manga. So those are gray points, and the red and the pink points are the H alpha, uh, H alpha disturbed and the red geyser galaxies. And we kind of see that there are almost two distinct population of radio AGNs happening there. So in the lower mass regime, most of the radio detected source are H alpha disturbed and red geysers. You see fewer gray points here. And in the high mass regime, you see mostly gray points and not this red and pink points. So that means in the lower mass regime, you mostly see galaxies with detectable optical emission lines with a low luminosity radio AGN in the center. And on the higher mass side, you see more like radio galaxies or ones with radio jets that you normally think about when you think about radio galaxies. So this might be the ones, this, are, this might be the typical quiescent galaxies having the radio mode AGN in the center that might be, uh, that might have uh, possible uh, uh, signatures that we're seeing here. Uh, we did an energetics argument to take the connection between the radio mode AGN and the maintenance mode feedback slightly further. So what we did was we had a measurement of the average radio luminosity coming from these geysers, right, from, by averaging the radio luminosity coming from all the geysers. So the value was about 10 to the 21. And we used that uh, to kind of, we looked at the relation between the jet kinetic power and the uh, radio, uh, radio power uh, from the Hickman Best catalog. And we found out that that's the jet mechanical energy that we are getting. And we did some uh, back of the envelope calculation, and this is what we are seeing, that the average AGN heating power is about the same order of magnitude as the cooling rate that we are seeing from the X-ray gas from the center of galaxies. So if the wind-like features that we are seeing in the H alpha equivalent width map, if those are indeed uh, winds from the radio mode AGN, they have the power or they have the capability to suppress, to stop the cooling and to suppress the star formation and they might, they can maintain quiescence. So they might be possible evidence of the maintenance mode feedback that we have been looking for all this while. So I'll leave the summary slide because I'm actually running out of time. Yeah, so let's yeah. thank Namrata. Thank there is time for a very fast question. You can discuss with her while we have the coffee break. Do we have a fast question? Or Okay, so now we have the coffee break and uh, we reconvene in this room at five minutes after four. <laughs>